All right, welcome back. This is the Tour Res Recovery or Res Recovery Podcast, episode four. 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 Wow. Uh, I'd like Watch to go them. around the oh. room. Go around the room. Introduce yourselves. Uh, I'm Darian Chabata, the tour director. I'm Domingo Whiteman. I'm an alcoholic. I'm Cheyenne. I'm, I'm the tour prevention specialist. I can't really disclose my name right now because I'm in the witness protection program. <laughs> <laughs> Are you buzzing me out? No. <laughs> <laughs> my name's Shane. Shane Williman. Glad to be here. Welcome, Welcome Shane. Shane. Uh, Carmelo Revelas, tour case manager. And I am Barry Botone. I'm the peer recovery support specialist for the Tribal Opioid Response Project. Uh, today, you know, we are here with the Shine Rapo Productions. Thank you. Big shout out to Hawk and the staff around here. You know, uh, it, it really helps us out for them to uh, let us get involved with uh, getting the word out there about what we do. You know, I think it's very important. Uh, we do, you know, we did our live this morning. I had Shane on. That was, yeah. that was, man, that was amazing. You know, and, you know, uh, we've had some big events happen this past weekend. And uh, I like to mm-hmm. also bring up that we were on Fox 25 this morning. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. That, that's, that's huge. Look you know, um, bringing more awareness to what we do. Maybe, you know, uh, it reaches the right people is what I'm always worried about. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, a lot of people from the tribe, like around here in Concho, they know what we do. But, you know, there are a group of people that suffer in silence. And that's who that's the crowd that we're trying to reach. You know, trying to use all these different platforms, trying to use all these different ways to reach out to people to let them know that there is help available. Oh, I just bumped my mic. But, uh mm-hmm. You know, uh, would you, Darian, like to speak about what we've been doing lately? And Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah I mean, uh, it's been a lot. Uh, so we rolled out our college safe boxes, which uh, is just a, a way to get our usual harm reduction supplies into uh, people's hands that are, you know, at risk from experimenting with uh, substances or intimate contact or anything like that. And so... Um, We did that, snag bags, which are all just anonymous mail order systems, uh, and we've distributed a lot in, what, three, four weeks? Uh, We've gotten, like, a little bit over 200 orders. So that's, you know, like 2,000 fentanyl test kits. That's, like, 200-plus Narcan. Uh, It's almost 300 HIV test kits. So, I mean, we've been, uh, you know, been busy packing orders. We're, like, pretty much now our own post office, it seems like. Uh, and then we started our All Nations Recovery Gourd Clan. And so uh, with Barry as head man dancer at the uh, Labor Day Benefit Powwow on the 27th, we had a huge turnout. Shane was even there. He, he started. That's when it became All Nations. <laughs> uh, and so that's just, you know, a little bit of what we've done this past month. And then, uh, you know, in a few days or I guess a week and a half, we have our Communities Care event in Watonga, which is a town-wide event. Uh, addressing substance use in the communities. And we have about 40 programs that are going to come out there uh, just to show support and provide resources to everybody out there. Uh, And then later that day, we're actually going to be co-hosting a uh, Department of Health powwow uh, in Canton. And so, you know, All Nations Recovery will be there, uh, you know, rattling out. Oh, Um, yeah. 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 Awesome. All right. uh, You know, those are huge 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 uh things that we've been doing you know and it seems that the res recovery gourd clan uh we're gonna be busy yeah yep. you know definitely gonna be busy you mm-hmm. know uh been asked to come out to a couple of couple of other powwows you know or benefit dances you know and uh that's that's what we're there for you know we want to get the word out about what we do as a as a group you know so if you know anybody that Maybe you just support somebody in recovery or you are in recovery or you're trying to look for a way to get back to your culture. You know, there's a lot of healing that goes on inside that circle. A lot of good feelings that are happening at benefit dances, at powwows, you know, all these different gatherings. You know, uh, it seems that our elders and our, you know, uh, our customs, our culture, you know, uh, it involves a lot of healing. 
So I think that's very important that, you know, we get the word out there about what we're trying to do. Uh, Domingo, would you like to share the meditation this morning? Yeah. yeah. Well, today's uh, February 1st, so we made it through January. So today's meditation is coming from Rolling Thunder. He is Cherokee. So what 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 You can't just sit down and talk about the truth. It doesn't work that way. You have to live it, be part of it, and you get to know it. And that was from Rolling Thunder Cherokee. Today's meditation is we all read books that have much information in them. Often we pick up on little sayings that we remember. Inside of us is the little owl, the owl of knowing. It talks to us, guiding us, n- nurturing us. Often when we get information, it's hard to live by, but it's easy to talk about it. It's living the red road that counts. Walk the talk. If we really want freedom in our lives, if we really want to be happy, if we really want to have peace of mind, it's the truth we must seek. Wado, wado. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I guess if they're comparing the truth to that little owl, yeah, I was scared of it. (laughs) 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 I've heard that. (laughs) You know, um, and my truth is, you know, uh, I'm I'm absent in like all phases of my life when I'm using drugs and alcohol. You know, I'm not going. Don't expect any great decisions coming out of me if I'm drinking or using drugs. You know, and I've, I've I understand that now. But the growing process, you know, the pain in that growing process, realizing where my life kept ending up and what kept happening over and over and over and over. And I just didn't understand how this thing had taken over my life. You know, but being able to, uh, you know, get into my big book and uh, read it with uh, a good sponsor, you know, I've, I've been able to uh, recognize these things. I've been able to uh, have a peace of mind, you know, and that's been huge in my recovery. You know, uh, I don't just feel like there's something wrong with, I know there's something wrong. I, I have a sickness, but as long as I realize that and recognize that, then it's, it, it kind of, that growing process takes on a whole new a whole other meaning you know it it, i'm aware now Mm. i've been told you know i don't get to use the excuse that i don't know anymore you know i've been educated i've been shown you know uh i i see these other people around me and i do what they do and that that's that's been huge for me you know but when it comes down to it, you know, I just got honest about my situation. You know, uh, I had a, I had a ten ring circus going on whenever I was lying, whenever I was in my addiction. Man, it was so I told all these lies, and it was so hard to remember all of them. <laughs> you know, and that was just the life that I created for myself. Because if anybody, if one person knew the truth, how much I was suffering, you know, I don't think I would have even, I didn't want them looking at me in a, in a different light that, you know, I'm not as, I'm not having a good time. I'm not enjoying myself, you know, because that, that was the easy part to paint my life as, you know, is that this lie can go on and on and on. Till, till I'm in my grave, you know, that's how, that's how sick I was, you know, is that I'm willing to live this lie. I'm willing to find an excuse for everything that I do and justify everything that I do, you know, and the relief that I found today in being honest with myself, no more lies. You know, I don't have to lie about anything anymore. And, you know, just that relief is beyond anything that, you know, uh, 
I could even compare it to. Because it's funny that <laughs> me and Shane were talking about me being honest with myself. And it just made me laugh so hard because the thought actually crossed my mind that if I'm going to be honest with myself, I should probably start telling myself the truth. <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's a simple idea. Yeah. It's not easy. And like Shane said, enlightening, you know, yeah, it, it's yeah. all this, this great thing happened. Yeah. You know, and I thought this beam of light would come down. And it would be like, oh, you it know. Was. But yeah, it was. <laughs> it <happened. But laughs> you didn't see it. No, yeah. it was more like a Homer Simpson moment. Like, no, yeah. you know. <laughs> <laughs> My dog, Hope, was like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it was like, oh, my God. Like, you know, and that's, it, it's funny now. But the pain that I had to go through to come to that thought is is you know i i have nothing else that i can really tell you that that it caused me you know the pain that i had to go through to realize that you know uh not only am i the problem but i'm also the answer you know uh that that's you know like i heard i watched this other guy that goes live uh, I think his name's, well, I won't even say his name, but, um, <laughs> you know, he was in Europe last time I seen and he kept saying, okay, yeah, you are the problem, but you're also the medicine mm. that can heal yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm. And that was huge for me. Huge, huge, huge. Uh, is there anything, Shane, that you could tell us a little bit about your truth? Oh, man. Mm -hmm. Just listening to you, it, it um, you know, I know I know the authentic, genuine Barry Boton, you know, sober, sane. Uh, what you present uh, to everyone you meet today, and and just watching you talk and and uh, be free and comfortable, um, it's kind of it kind of makes me emotional because. I can remember um, when I lived that life and all of the stage characters that I presented to the different groups of people so that I could keep all these arrangements in place that I thought I needed so that I'd be okay. And how exhausting that was to keep up with all the stories and uh, you know, keep the narrative going with everyone. And uh, and ultimately, like, it's no surprise that at the end of this deal, you end up insane, you know, literally. And for me, it was like clinically insane, uh, not just because of the effects of drugs and alcohol, but but literally the the wear and tear that it does on the human mind and the heart. And uh, yeah, so so listen to you talk about that and, and getting to be there when, you know, just to have those uh, those conversations that begin with the language of the heart where, where two men start having conversations that we're not comfortable having, you know. We start talking about things that uh, out in those other groups we ran with, uh, they aren't common conversation. You know, you don't get vulnerable and uh, you don't talk about your feelings or what you really think, you know. And... Uh, I think that's probably the beginning of this journey is, is um, ultimately, uh, I think the Creator puts these people in our lives that, that uh, something gives us that ability to be vulnerable and, and talk about what's really going on. And um, I just feel really honored that that, that got to be me when, when, when that was happening for you. And uh, because that's really the I hate to use the word magic because it, it sounds like a sleight of hand trick, but but what I'm talking about is the the fantastic, you know, the incredible, the um, uh, to watch another person have those moments of clarity and uh, years and years of, of frustration kind of uh, all come together at once, and suddenly what you've been seeking the whole time you find. And, uh, you know, that, uh, that took a very long time for me, man. Uh, 
I was in active addiction for uh, uh, about 30 years. And, um, you know, it all started with, uh, you know, I think about it today and, and why do we lie? What are we hiding from? You know, what's, what's really going on in this thing? And, and I can tell you from, from a very young age, you know, um, there was an uncomfortability, uh, an uncom- uncomfortableness, uh, an awkwardness, uh, an insecurity um, that was in me uh, from, from about as long as I can remember that at the time when you're that young, you, you can't verbalize it to anybody. And uh, today I know that, that that restlessness and that irritability and that, that discontentment that's inside of me is, is really the symptoms of alcoholism. But I didn't have that language back then. Um, uh, and at some point, you know, uh, for me it was around 10 years old. And um, it's kind of a funny story, and I tell it all the time because it's significant to me uh, in recognizing uh, – the very first time that I poured alcohol on alcoholism, because see, I already had it, you know. Sometimes we, because alcohol, the word alcohol is in alcoholism, we think that all it has to do with is that I drink too much. Um, or, or uh, and, and literally, we don't understand that uh, until we get here that alcohol for a long time was the solution for me to that awkwardness I already had, and it worked, you know. And I was sitting at a barn dance in, uh, in between uh, Turpin, Oklahoma, and, and uh, Liberal, Kansas, when I was about 10 years old. And uh, there was this, you know, my choir teacher's uh, daughter, her name was uh, Julie Schmidt. <clears throat> Funny, like the alcoholic mind, like I remember these things, you know, like, uh, oh man, she was a ninth grader, I'm 10 years old. And uh, I'm just, uh, and uh, they're in there dancing and having a good time. And I can't participate because, you know, like, um, I can sing in the shower and I can dance by myself. But, like, in this group of people, like, suddenly I start looking like Elaine on uh, Seinfeld. Like, (laughs) I can't get it together. And it's awkward, you know. And I'm out there. And uh, my older brother, uh, uh, God rest his soul, he died from this illness. Uh, Uh. he, his friends were sitting in, in the, uh, outside the barn, and, and they said, Little Williman, uh, come over here, man. And, and they hand me a Coors Light. It was those pull tabs back in the day, man. And, and my dad drank quite a bit, and so I, you know, I had sipped on some beers. But this is the first time that I get to, like, you know. And I could chug from, like, 10 years old, man. Like, I got rid of that thing. <clears throat> and they gave me another one. Instantly, I have found the solution <laughs> to the problem of Shane in Shane's skin. It goes away, bro. I'm energized, feel lifted up, confident. I walk in there, and with no hesitation, I ask Julie Schmidt to dance, and I've got my hands around her hips, and she's looking down at me, and I spend the rest of that night trying to convince this girl that I could be her man. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to tell you something. <laughs> she told me one day when you get older, maybe we could talk about it, right? Well, shoot, I'm married. Flash forward about uh, nine, ten years. I'm married with a young kid, uh, and and I find out that Julie Schmidt is divorced, and uh, I, I lacked principles and morals at this time, but uh, I had remembered <laughs> what she said to me when I was ten, <laughs> you know, and I looked her up. Unfortunately, uh, she was suffering from a pretty bad divorce, and at this time, she still wasn't interested. Uh, <laughs> she's off the hook now. I'm happily married. I love you, Jeannie. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that was the first time, man, that, that I, I recognized what alcohol did for me, you know. And, uh, you know, what I found out later is that it doesn't do that for normal people that aren't alcoholic. You know, alcohol is a sedative. And, and a normal reaction to alcohol is that, hey, there's, there's poison entering my body. Uh, I start to feel a little tipsy and a little dizzy, and I say, that's enough. No, thank you. Uh, that's not my reaction. Um, you know, uh, I'm a sober member of Alcoholics Anonymous, and I don't speak for AA as a whole. Um, and anything that I say 
during this time, if you can't re reconcile it with the Big Book of Alcoholics Anonymous, I ask you to disregard it. All of this is based on my experience. And, and as much as I try to stay close to the literature, because ultimately that truth set me free, uh, some of it I would have to uh, uh, give a little wiggle room on, on that it might be my inter interpretation. Um, I, I was sponsored by some people who stay real close to the literature and are, are very interested in the history of what, what happened back when those guys started that thing uh, because they're very interested in the, uh, uh, the percentages of recovery that were occurring at that time when the message of Alcoholics Anonymous was so pure. And uh, there weren't a lot of meetings. It was passed around by uh, word of mouth. And uh, there's a lot of stuff that's been diluted and watered down over time. And uh, I don't want to get into that. Uh, that's not really my business. But, but ultimately, when it became my time to, to really seek this solution, um, uh, man, I wanted to know the truth. Like, show me how I can recover from this. And uh, there was a lot at stake at that time, you know. I could tell you, I could tell you a, a lot of ugly stories and, and ridiculous stuff. I, I, I was a hopeless uh, crack addict for uh, about 18 years. I, I didn't pick that up until later in my life, but that accelerated um, this illness in, in a way that, uh, uh, God bless you if you're out there on that stuff, man. Um, the psychological toll and and the the demoralization that occurs uh, out of out of what, what a person's got to do to fulfill that craving is um, it's hard to it's hard to understand and uh, you know I grew up in um, uh, I moved from a little town in Oklahoma to Austin Texas when my folks split up uh, when I was about. Uh, 13 years old and so I went from this little rural community up there in, in no man's land I mean y'all y'all know where the panhandle is like, yeah. like nobody yeah. goes there on purpose <laughs> right um, but I went from the panhandle to Austin Texas and and to the northeast side of Austin Texas and um, let's just say it's not a rich neighborhood and um, my mom was on her own for the first time and uh, you know, it was right in the middle of the crack epidemic in, in 1985 and 86. It hit the streets in there on that side of town. And, 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 brother, I can tell you, like, I got to witness what it does to human beings. And um, uh, good people that, uh, uh, you know, lose control of their lives. And um, I was one of the people, I, I was in athletics and played football and baseball and, and, and mostly in a, a, a black neighborhood. And, and these guys were like, the worst thing that you could ever do would be a, be a dope fiend, right? Like, don't do that. Like, if you go there, bro, like, like um, you're out, right? And uh, so I was never going to do that, you know? And we were going to smoke weed and do a little ecstasy and some, some acid and, and, and party on the weekends in 6th Street in Austin, Texas. By the time I got in high school, it was like anarchy down there during the club scene, club scene and the new wave scene. And, and, uh, and we were partying and it was, you know, Friday night lights and, and then uh, go downtown. And, you know, what keeps you up all night? Ecstasy. You know, we're, we're partying. The cops are letting you in. It doesn't matter. And... Uh, what a, you know, if I wasn't an alcoholic and an, uh, and, and an addict, and, and that would just been a phase of my life that I could look back with that and go, man, that was an awesome time. But I really didn't know what it was setting me up for. And um, uh, I got in a little trouble. And um, uh, yeah, down on 6th Street and um, got my first felony charge when I was 17 years old. And, uh, and, you know, me and my buddies uh, were trying to live up to the lyrics in, in N.W.A. And and, uh, <laughs> and so, you know, specialize in ganking, you know. And uh, so I'm out on there. Uh, we're snatching gold chains and, and uh, doing what we got to do. And um, we got caught. And uh, scholarships down the tube, football, uh, baseball opportunities gone. I got I got a. Uh, second degree felony for robbery with intent to cause bodily injury at 17 years old. Um, my dad's a very conservative man in, in Southwest Kansas. He, he doesn't 
he doesn't identify with me anymore. I, you know, uh, my mom is, is in active addiction at the time in alcoholism and, and, uh, um, God bless her. She, she couldn't be present. And, um, my, my brother had just passed away from this, this illness before that happened. And, and I mean, that, that, that senior year was just like a, you know, mom goes to treatment after a suicide attempt, uh, uh, brother dies, uh, in October and January I'm locked up. And, um, yeah, it was, uh, it was confusing for a 17 year old kid who, who already has, is in the beginning stages of alcoholism, you know? And I can remember, these are some good points. Um, when Sean died, um, I wasn't, uh, sorry. When Sean died, I, I was going to quit. You know, I remember at his memorial, I, memorial, I wrote that, wrote out this poem about, uh, drinking and driving him. And I was going to give it up, you know, like a tribute sobriety to my brother. And, and I couldn't pull it off. And um, two weeks later, you know, I, what I'm really doing now is, is um, it's this crazy thing that occurs. It, uh, is that not consciously, but now I've got another reason to rationalize my bad behavior anywhere I go, you know. I'm violent, I drink too much, I use too many street drugs, and if that would have happened to you, you'd do, you'd do it too. And that made sense to me at the time, you know? And, um, you know, the rest of my life, like if, 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 we, if we flash fa flash forward through 30 years, from 17 to 47, um, there were attempts to stop, and I, and I was introduced to Alcoholics Anonymous uh, because of that first felony. They part of my uh, divert, deferred adjudicated sentence was that I'd attend two AA meetings a week. So uh, that was the first time that, that I was introduced to AA, and um, I literally wanted to comply because obviously uh, I didn't want that deferred six to turn into mandatory twenty, and so. I, I did the best I could to comply and played the system. And um, it's, it's just interesting that you, you kind of pick up unintentionally little tidbits and pearls when you walk in and, alco in and out of Alcoholics Anonymous, um, uh, not knowing uh, the seriousness of my condition, <laughs> but kind of forced to be there. And these guys start telling me these truths that we're talking about. And the first one I can remember is this old biker in liberal Kansas. Uh, uh, I, you had to walk up to the podium to talk, you know. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I gather all my, when I walk up to the podium, my, my name is Shane. I'm an alcoholic. And, uh, and man, uh, I got this baby on the way. And uh, I got a beautiful wife. When I whip this alcoholism, I'm gonna have life by the short hairs. I think that might be verbatim what I said. <laughs> and this old biker stood up and just looked at me and said, young man, you're never gonna whip this shit. Excuse my language. And I didn't know till 30 years later what he meant, man. Like on your own power, with your own plan, you're never gonna beat this, you know? And the unfortunate part of that situation is, is what we've all learned is that until I'm ready to hear you tell me the truth, I can't accept it, you know, and especially with, with the alcoholic. And we were talking about this in the car. And, uh, you know, it occurred to me uh, as these guys took me through this book and, and were showing me the way out that, that obviously um, – this disease has something to do with the chemical that I'm putting in my body. Um, this craving that occurs when I put it, put it in me is, is an unnatural allergy that uh, it doesn't occur in the, in, the, in the temperate drinker or the average drug user, 
that like this thing that we call on the street Phenon or Jones and is is not a hundred percent across the board and uh, that 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 feeling that I get is actually an abnormal reaction to that drug and uh, that's that's what causes this problem for me that when I say to myself I'm just gonna get a six-pack and an eight ball that that I end up three days later uh, with my house covered in in uh you know cans and bottles and broke as a joke and uh haven't slept for seven days and and i've spent everything i had and and emptied all my resources uh that's because of this craving that i i didn't know i had that man i just thought i was a dumbass excuse me again (laughs) i lack moral fiber yeah (laughs) you know um and so You know, uh, so that's part of it. You know, uh, I have this mental obsession, this this idea that's stuck in my brain that that's always focused on the the way that the the alcohol and the drugs uh, treated me when it worked, which is you know it gives me that that feeling I got when I got to talk to Julie Schmidt, and and even though 30 years later, uh, you know, four felonies, uh, five treatment centers, um, you know, been in every county jail I've ever lived in. I uh, have no experience that shows me that it's safe to take a drink. My mind presents this idea out of nowhere that, like, uh, like, like, forget what just happened three days ago <laughs> and the last 27 years. That's an anomaly. This time, <laughs> you're really going to be able to drink like a gentleman. And if anybody saw all those experiences, like alcoholic or non-alcoholic, only my mom knows, God bless you, mother, uh, it's absurd the insanity the links that we go to like like you know the book uh, alcoholics anonymous talks about this 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 thing that we don't have that uh, we're unable at certain times to bring into our consciousness with sufficient force the memory of the suffering and humiliation of even a week or or a, or a month ago we are without defense against the first drink right that that thing that happens when you put your hand on a hot stove when you're four and, and, and you had to do it, what is that red thing? Psh, oh, and you never do that again? I don't have that with alcohol. <laughs> it's burned me 10,864 times. <laughs> yeah. But I'm an aggressive experimenter. <laughs> yeah. Maybe really expensive vodka. <laughs> <laughs> and... Peruvian flake cocaine. We can do that. <laughs> yeah. Fail, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I, I, ref- I feel real blessed uh, that God kept me alive through all those failed attempts uh, because I've lost a lot of friends that, you know, experiment three went wrong. Uh, my brother, for instance, you know, he had no idea when we left that party that night that, uh, uh, that that was going to be the last time I see him, you know? And uh, so uh, I try to believe that there's a purpose behind all that. And whether I'm playing a trick on my own mind or, 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 or the faith that I have is real, it doesn't seem to matter because since I've engaged in this process and, and done what these people told me, the promises they said that were going to happen for me have happened for me. And so I just... I look at the book of Alcoholics Anonymous as a textbook and a lab book, like it gives specific, precise instructions on how these people recovered from this disease. And, and it's like a cookbook, man. Uh, it, you know, you eat your most favorite cake, like the one you bake, right? <laughs> yeah. you, it comes out the same every time, Barry, you know? And if you gave me that recipe and I followed it exactly, I'd get that same cake, right? And, and so... That's kind of the same thing with the big book, man. If I follow that recipe, I'll get what those guys got. And, and I'm just another living example of, of, of that's what happened, you know. And I try, to, I try my best because I'm so passionate about uh, I, my brothers and sisters in addiction. That there's so many of them out there that just don't know there's a way out. And, um, and thank God for what you guys are doing. Because somebody's got to keep them alive until they find out, you know. They're not, they're not bad people trying to get good. They're sick people trying to get well. And uh, um, 
everybody needs an opportunity to 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 have that that thing that we all had which was was somebody lovingly you know it wasn't very kind some of the guys that were in my life uh they told me some 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 truths about me (laughs) that kind of hurt my last feeling you know (laughs) but i had to accept that man uh that's the truth about me you know that that perhaps i'm not a victim of my circumstances perhaps all of my troubles are of my own making Perhaps every single thing that I've suffered from, I've set the ball rolling, you know? Like, yeah, Sean died and my parents split up and we lived in that neighborhood, but you know, I've seen a lot of people come out of those situations and do just fine. Perhaps it wasn't those events. Perhaps it was how I reacted to them, you know? Instead of it being something that I use to build my character, (laughs) I use it as an excuse to destroy my own life. And uh, so I'm glad I get to smile at those things today. And I've got, a, I got an opportunity because of this program to make amends to a lot of people. And uh, today I don't hang my head and I don't have to hide from anybody. And I have good relationships with, with, with every member of my family. Um, I have a son in, in Austin, Texas, who uh, is sober, uh, I think around two years now off of heroin. Oh, and uh, awesome. I know he's well. We don't talk right now, and I understand why. And uh, my hope is that someday that, you know, um, we'll find that understanding. Because uh, although although we both have the same disease, and, and I wish nothing more than, than for both of us to be able to let each other off the hook, um, I understand that, that you know, 10 or 20 years with an active alcoholic would make a skeptic out of anyone. And uh, my little old uh, almost five years in March uh, to him is like, we'll see, Pops. And I understand, you know, I understand. But uh, it means a a lot for him him to know that I love him and that I'm wishing him well. And, uh, um, you know, I, I hope that things can change. So, man, if I say anything else, I'll be repeating myself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good at that. I'm good at that. <laughs> and and uh, thanks for thanks for allowing me a chance to do this, man. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, Thank we appreciate you. it. I should Shame. shut up now. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> well, I think I have a few questions for you. Okay. You know, uh, okay. uh, nothing too too. Uh, too hard, I hope. Hard. You yeah. know. Uh, well, I I understand. You know, we got we got a clubhouse that we hang out at. Big shout out to the five hundred six. Whoa, you know? yeah. And uh, uh, got to give a shout out to Cindy. You know, uh, we love you, Cindy. Love you, you know? Cindy. And yeah. uh, uh, through your experience, uh, you know, coming from Austin, enemy territory, and uh, true. True. <laughs> Boomer sooner. Uh, uh, like, uh, you've seen my house. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I had to get out of there. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know, uh, does does the recovery community keep changing, or you know, do do you see a lot of the same processes going on? Or oh yeah, man, that's that's a good question. I, I need to be careful here. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's different. Um. But that's good, you know. Um, for me, I could I could use any excuse in the world <laughs> in the early stages to to find a way out of doing this. Not to mention, I got a mind that's trying to kill me anyway. So, I, like, I don't have to come up with ideas; it's presenting them, you know. <laughs> like, uh, and. Uh, you know, what I've found is I, uh, my sponsor in Austin, Texas, God bless you, Don Mabry. Hope your wife's doing well. Um, there's a part of the book, man, and he just, like, straight comes out the book. Like, this is not my opinion, Shane. And I, it says something to the effect, and I might be paraphrasing, but it's kind of burned into me. Um, Though you be one man with this book in your hand, you have everything you need to duplicate what we have done. <laughs> So that means no matter, Shane, where you go, if you've got this book, if you don't like that meeting, you can start your own, right? Yeah. 
and it's no longer like, am I at the mercy of whether or not the fellowship is like the way I liked it? You know? Yeah. This is an inside job. You know? Like, you and I sitting down together with the big book open, uh, talking about our condition and looking for a solution is Alcoholics Anonymous. You know? And so, uh, yeah, it's different. And it, but it's been good. It's been challenging. Um, it's caused me to use the program because some of it's very disturbing, and that's what it's about for me. It's like, look, man, when there's when you're disturbed, there's something wrong with you. And I got a long way to go, y'all. Like like last night, it occurred to me how sick my mind still is, sitting there with my wife, who, like, God bless her, man. Uh, She's, she's watched the entire thing materialize, you know, and stood by. And everything that you could say that's, that's negative in a relationship, every single thing that you could say society would tell you to get a divorce over, she and I have done to each other and, uh, by God's grace, have walked through that fire and become stronger. And that's because of that program. It showed us what it really means to forgive and love and, like, honor those vows you took like it did say in sickness and in health tell death do you part or until she kills you (laughs) (laughs) and um she did some really uh uncommon things at the end that uh you know my wife's an incredible human being yes she is she um man she she watched how sick i got and she stood right there and, and she did the best thing she ever could for me is at some point she realized how sick I was and that I was beyond human aid and how much I needed a power greater than myself. And she started telling me when I would say, screaming in the middle of the night, God, please help me, Jeannie, please help me. She would look me in the eye and say, Shane, there's nothing I can do. And uh, not in a, in, a, in a way of malice, man. Like, the truth is, there's nothing I can do. Like, uh, if this God thing is not real, you're a dead man. And uh, what I found out is, it's absolutely real. And uh, um, I still don't know what to call him. I like y'all's name better than anything I've run across. Like, the the great mystery, Mahil. I like that. Mm. Yeah, I like that because I'm steadily trying to figure him out, yeah. you know, and uh, all I really understand about the whole thing is that uh, um, I should pray often and uh, I should pray sincerely and um, I should I should meet him on that that kind of understanding like you and I have like, hey, hey, God. I really don't know what to call you. Uh, I don't know where you're at, uh, but here's the deal. <laughs> like, I need your power because there's some stuff I got to do in order to stay sober, and on my own power, I can't do it. And he's provided it every time, you know? And, uh, man, we've got to watch it materialize. Oh, like, man. I want to talk about you. Man, this man's sitting in my house. All right. And we're going through this inventory process. <laughs> and uh excuse me he says um man i don't know about this like the what are you talking about like the the freedom the the changing the uh you know like there's this dude in, i think in clinton he still owes me 20 bucks <laughs> 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 <Dang>. <laughs> Is that for your phone yeah. charger? Yeah. 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 yeah, I don't know if I could let that go. Yeah. 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 You're like, man, he took my light up phone charger. Yeah. Yeah. And we're laughing, and I said, man, I remember when it occurred to me, like, I can't bring anything from that life into this new one. Yeah. <laughs> and Barry was like, that was another one of the, hmm. <laughs> yeah. None of it? Yeah. It don't. Spiritual laws and and uh, street laws, they, they don't, don't mix. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You got to let it all go. Bro. Yeah, you know. And uh, so yeah, that shortened my list a whole <laughs> lot. <laughs> <That's> just, <laughs> check check check. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I had about four pages, <laughs> double yeah. columns, like of everybody that you know. 
and awesome. but you know it, it was a and it made me really and he told me he told me uh he said you know you can't bring that over here and be okay you can't even go back over there dab your toes in it then expect to be okay over here yeah you know you can't you have to let it all go you know and uh yeah, it, it shortened my list by two or three pages, you know, and it was like the real people that, you know, uh, I feel like wronged me, you know, like in one way, one fashion or another. And it wasn't over material things. It wasn't over money. It wasn't, you know, uh, I feel like these people kind of like hurt my soul, I guess you could say, you know. Yeah, yeah, deep scars. Yeah, deep scarred. And uh, it was it was him that helped me. You know, uh, we started talking about that truth thing. You know, we started talking about, you know, and, and it was that going through this process with him that I couldn't, I don't, I don't know if anybody else could have helped me in that way, mm. you know, and uh, yeah, it was just part of my process, you know, uh, realizing that. I was actually still up. I mean, it was like I'm going out of my way thinking of people that did still owe me money. You know, people that still, you know, stole from me. People that, yeah. you I know. I got to balance the sheet, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. And it's, it's, it's crazy. And I like the way uh, uh, you talked about those deep scars. Because there's a lot of brothers and sisters out there that, that, that have troubles other than alcoholism. And I, I just want to say this. Uh, God's with you. Um, there's a way out uh, and there's only one way to say this and it's very matter of fact if you're alcoholic and you're dealing with trauma you got to deal with the alcoholism first because if you continue to treat the trauma with the alcoholism you're going to keep the snowball headed towards hell and so we got to arrest the alcoholism first and then we can address those scars uh, and it's hard because it's raw uncut no additive or preservative you don't get to buffer that feeling anymore, but that's where God needs you. He needs you to feel it and let him heal it, you know, and um, I'll shut up with that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, this is just a small part of what Shane brings to the table every time. You know, uh, he he's an amazing guy. You know, I love his family. You know, um, Hope one day to get to meet his son, you know, down in Austin. You know, uh, that's amazing. He's got two years. You know, uh, we wish you all. Love you, Blake Wesley. Love you all. I mean, wish you all the luck, all the love, everything that you need to help you through that process. Mm -hmm. You know, that's very important, you know, from one addict to another. Uh, is there anything else that you would like to add about? What we got coming up here soon? <laughs> well, I don't know. I mean, we got what three other people that work for Tor here. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. I never remember everything. Well, yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I say it to you because yeah. you're kind of you're you're the captain, bro. Like, no, you, not you, really. No, I just we, answered we emails. We had to go two days without you. <laughs> <laughs> we were. I had a. We didn't even know how to up. mail a box. Yeah. yeah, we were struggling. No, okay. uh, <laughs> Uh, so, like, exciting news in the last episode, we did talk about, you know, we're broke, which is, you know, just typical tour fashion at this point. Uh, we did get awarded a $85,000 grant to address harm reduction issues, um, wow. which is all going to supplies, whether it be clothing for homeless people, um, actual harm reduction supplies. Uh, we're going to open up some more distribution sites for our stigma-free uh, Narcan pickups, which is like, you know, little mini fridges just to solidify where people in these small communities can get Narcan. And so um, we hope to be rolling that out soon. It also does include um, kind of like campaign materials to uh, influence, um, I don't know, a community approach to caring for people with substance use disorder. So we'll probably have harm reduction man, harm reduction, harm reducer boy shirts or harm reduction league shirts. Uh, just because that's kind of an organic thing that, like I said, like it started off as a little joke as harm reduction man when we were filling up vending machines, I think. And then now we have people 
just randomly like, oh my god, it's Harm Reduction Man! <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and we All had excited. no, yeah, no idea that uh, that was going to happen. And so that'll be something that's, uh, you know, like our own cultural shift against, um, you know, addressing substance use disorder and like how there's there's no shame in you know caring for people that are in need. Uh, and that's why it's kind of always been odd where people kind of uh, turn a blind eye to those that are suffering. Because, I mean, if you see a kid fall off a bike, you're going to, you know, help that kid. But why not an adult that's, you know, that suffered trauma and, and you know, poured alcohol on top of alcoholism. Um, and sure. so, yeah. And so that would just be kind of, you know, a little uh, show of support to people that, you know, we're all ears whenever you guys need help. Um, I mean, we have people, you know, walk into our office and just cry and tell us stuff. Um, and then they're like, all right, I feel better now. And then, you know, we'll hear about them later and they're doing well. They're, you know, clean and sober. Uh, we've heard, you know, we've saved a lot of our tribal youth um, from overdoses on accident. Um, so, like, they've, you know, smoked weed or something and it turned out to be laced with fentanyl. But because of our harm reduction efforts, uh, you know, getting Narcan out there, um, these lives are saved and so that's something we you know we take pride in but we don't you know broadcast because it's kind of a weird topic to you know say hey we saved you know this many kids um but it's something that you know needs to be known yeah um yeah. it's just you know a way to go about it it's gonna kind of a little iffy but yeah so uh we hope to see some huge progress for this uh this little mini grant um in addressing you know substance use disorder in the communities um Domingo, you want to talk about your yoga? Oh, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. We all been tuning in. been doing yoga every Wednesday at 10 to 10.45. So uh, I'll then shout out to everybody that's been attending. And it's every Wednesday. So, uh, you know, it's I, I folk, yoga, yoga helped me through, you know, my recovery of stress and kind of more of, you know, just staying healthy in mind, body. And spirit also, it's a big, big thing and help me, you know, meditation. So I like to, you know, present that and show it and teach it. And, you know, because you'll work your body muscles you never worked before in a while. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, the meditation too, kind of like, you know, taking that stress off, you know, your shoulders and just take a moment to yourself, you know, because, you know, everybody's busy. We always got stuff to do, you know, kids, everything, work, uh, businesses, but I like to take that moment just kind of to yourself to uh, kind of close out everything and, you know, bring your, you know, your chakras aligned and, you know, we don't want your heart and mind everywhere. Mm -hmm. Kind of keep it together, keep a, keep a whole. So yeah, if, uh, every Wednesday at 10 a.m., you know, just come in and uh, be on live feed, you know, like we do our morning meditations and uh, yeah, just, you know, I, I love it, you know, so all my yogis. <laughs> <laughs> hey Shane, would you like to... Tell them about these informal gatherings. Oh, yeah. So um, there's a meeting in, in Watonga on um, uh, Tuesday nights at 6 p.m. And a um, uh, little backstory, um, not much to it, but during the, uh, during the pandemic, during COVID, when all the meetings got shut down, uh, my wife and I uh, were desperate. To, to continue to have the fellowship and, and try to provide something so we on zoom we started this meeting called these informal gatherings and there's a there's a little page in bill's story uh, in the big book about what it looked like in the early early days and he talks about it these informal gatherings you could see up to 50 to 200 persons and that you know we were growing in number and power and talking about how how wonderful the fellowship was and how everybody was helping anybody it's it's community you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, and he talked about how the newcomer could come and find that and find the fellowship they seek and, and talk about what's going on with them, with people that understand and that can help them find a way out. So that's the inspiration for, for this. And, 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 and Barry and I dreamed about this together. And, uh, um, you know, that was, that was when we talked about what's the dream, Barry? Uh, what's it look like? Uh, what's in your heart? You know, and, uh, you wanted to get sober and be sane and take care of your family and help your community and your tribe. And uh, what's happening? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> God heard that, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, man, what a life, you know. And so, yeah, in Watonga on 6 p.m., man, come see us. And uh, it's awkward for everybody. As much as I'm going to tell you to, you know, don't let it be awkward. Just just come see us. Um, 
like if we had the dope sack and told you to come over, you'd come. <laughs> yeah, for sure. You wouldn't be tripping on what yeah. color I was. <laughs> yeah. You just come, you know? Yeah. And um, we got the hope sack now. <laughs> yeah. Hope yeah. fiends. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so. Yeah, it's, it's uh, I, I like it because, you know, it's like a room full of newcomers. Yeah, you know, yeah, and uh, you, I, I promise you, if you just give it a chance, you will fit right in. Yeah. You know, surrounding communities. You know, we're trying to get the word out there. You know that, you know, there is a solution. So uh, we would love to see everybody come out. Uh, love to see, you know, uh, just the different variety of people that I know that this sickness has affected. Mm -hmm. So uh, everybody's more than welcome. On Tuesday nights from 6 to 7, 203 North South Street in Watonga. Perfect. And uh, you want to tell them about the talking circles tonight? Do I want to talk? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> tell them. Tell, <laughs> tell, come, come to dates. 1950 South Shepherd every Thursday, 630 Smudge, 7 o'clock to 8 o'clock is the meeting. Come listen to Barry talk the entire time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but no, I, I had a little something to say about the little the truth that we were talking about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if we you don't mind. If you don't mind, you go I mean, right on ahead. Sir. I mean, I know this is a Shane and Barry <laughs> podcast, but <laughs> some of us have something to say sometimes. <laughs> but but no, um, <laughs> you know, just having a con you know, I was having a conversation with Miss Botone this morning, mm -hmm. and um, mm. and uh, we were talking about how. Sometimes in, in order to find, you know, you take off this big layer of um, of who you used to be. Mm. And I used to know who Barry was and to see who he is now. It's like I can't even imagine him being the way he was besides him telling his stories right. now. So it's it's amazing to see. But once you shed that layer and you start to find yourself, sometimes that's an overwhelming experience. Mm. And. You start finding um, like out like more and more about who you really are, and sometimes that process is overwhelming. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's really stressful. Sometimes it causes anxiety, and that's what you know. A lot of people think that once you get into recovery, like you don't have stress anymore. You don't have you don't have anxiety <laughs> anymore, <laughs> and it's it's yeah. like you know that's why we try to that's why we push yoga. That's why we push meditation. That's why we try to teach you guys. As much as we do about, you know, go go to Creator, go to Mahayo in the morning and pray that you're going to make it through this next day. Yeah. And um, that's – and it was just kind of uh, – to think about it the way that we were talking this morning, I was just like, man, I was like, that's so true. Was it because even if you're just a person that's just a normal person that's walking in life and you have all this stuff that's burdening you down and, and – um, once you're able to get all that off of you and you start being able to find out who you really are spiritually, you know, mentally and physically, it really changes you as a person and you could totally be flipped from who you used to be to who you're trying to learn who you are now. Yeah. And um, it's sometimes it's a hard process to learn about yourself because if you've never really learned about yourself, especially for people that started stuff at like 10 years old, yeah. when you don't even really know who you are yet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, sometimes, you know, even mentally, you still act like a 10 year old. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah. don't ever stop. Yeah. 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 You wouldn't be you if you didn't do that. <laughs> no. But, but seriously, like in, uh, to that point, like there's still people that have like, they don't, they never got to grow up out of that, that young person mindset and in order for them to go back and to start learning about themselves, they're going through life all over again. And sometimes it's a really heavy experience. Oh yeah. And, yeah. um, you know, I think we try to provide everybody the tools and the resources to be able to get through that experience and to try to help them as much as we can. And we do it through harm reduction. We do it through life skills. We do it through just being able to talk. And like Darian said, we have people just come into the office. Sometimes we just sit there and listen. Mm -hmm. We don't even say anything. Yeah, we gotta get better. It's at just, a, it's just a, at, it's just, at, it's just at a helping them. <laughs> yeah, it's just a, yeah. you know, it's just yeah. a release for people. Yeah. And. Yeah. 
and we're doing it now through the gourd dance and bringing people back to the circle and seeing people come out there that have never done it before Mm -hmm. or or people that have gone 20 years without doing it (laughs) and it's you know it's just a it's just a process and from that we see the ones that we influence and the one even our little ones start to see well this is how they're doing things this is how and we're breaking the we're breaking the cycle even in families and stuff that we don't even know yet and they see what we're doing and i think it's a i think it's pretty dang awesome Mm -hmm. Uh, whether some people see that or not i think it's pretty dang awesome that what we're doing is starting to have that effect yeah and even the strongest people can go through those days where they feel like they're still bogged down by that old life oh yeah oh, yeah. and oh, yeah. so yeah. so we try to provide all that in order to make sure that they're going to make it through that mm-hmm. day yeah for sure so yeah we do yeah. kind of do a lot i keep forgetting how much we do yeah, <laughs> yeah. half the time yeah. like yeah, yeah we, we just give out we narcan. just got that like, narcan machine in canton oh yeah oh yeah, yeah. narcan so machine number five canton. most number five yeah, the tribe, most like, in oklahoma that's huge thank you for that Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I know had, some stuff sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We did have he's, a lot. He's my secret in weapon. There. I was just saving him <laughs> yeah. for the next podcast. Yeah, but I'm for, glad he oh, said for when we oh, didn't okay. have a topic. <laughs> 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 but yeah, we we had a lot of first timers at our gourd dance. We have spare gourds, so if anybody ever wants to come out, mm, yeah. where yeah. we actually did get a cedar box donated to yeah. us mm. uh, because somebody believed in our cause, and so they just gave us a cedar box that. You know, we yes. could fit five or six cords at least. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. and that, and then um, if we anybody ever talk to come out to every yeah, single Hawk's level. now going to be honorary mm-hmm. member. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice. we're gonna have um, you know if anybody Hawk. wants to make uh, <laughs> yeah, like bandoliers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was there. Yeah, he was there. Yeah. You were there. You had three, four we other people there. there. Your brothers. Yeah, everybody was there. Mm-hmm. Your wife but was yeah. there. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, Mrs. Boatone was there. <laughs> Shout out to Mrs. Boto. <laughs> <laughs> Did I miss it? Uh, is it official? No. Uh, yeah, that Vegas was what the celebration was for. This July, <laughs> July, <laughs> July, <laughs> July 4th. <laughs> when it happens in front of the people. <laughs> yeah. 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 On, on the race. I heard if a dog soldier says it in front of the people, it, it, it's supposed no. to be real. Well, yeah. um, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Next time on. Yeah. <laughs> But, you know, oh. you brought up some stuff. good points. You know, we do we do do a lot. You know, it is hard to remember everything that we do. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, it's like whatever it takes to get to that person that may not even have a phone, you know, may not even be aware of. But I think now, like, our name is out there. You know, we may, you know, y'all were on Fox 25 this morning, mm-hmm. you know, doing an mm-hmm. interview. You know, uh, I mean, you know, having five Narcan machines Mm -hmm. in our communities, that's huge. You know, um, the list just keeps going and going and going and going. And we're just trying to find all these different avenues to find these people that need this help. And to us, that's like the most important thing. And I feel like we're very, we're very passionate about what we do, Mm. you know, and, uh, to be able to bring on people like Shane, you know, who uh, who is out in the community. And I feel like on his own personal level, you know, he helps out quite a few people, too. You know, you go to our clubhouse. He's definitely a present and active member in our clubhouse, you know. So very thankful that our paths have crossed, you know. Uh, very fortunate to uh, allow myself to, to receive the help that was offered. Mm-hmm. You know, and it, it's just as important to offer that help to somebody else, you know. So uh, I think we got to ride this wave. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Healing is, is as contagious as disease. Mm-hmm. Oh, All yeah. Right? Like like if it's it's something that that that's a that attraction thing. And so it's, it's great what's going on, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and uh, 
we are pretty attractive. <laughs> Man. <laughs> <laughs> There'll be a calendar when there's 12 of us. <laughs> yeah, we yeah, we yeah. Got oh, my goodness. For that. We Actually, literally got yeah. asked to do a calendar. Yeah, yeah. we had a, a, a an elder in Clinton Speaking was like, you that, guys. <laughs> Diego, you're a uh, Jew. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We had a request for us to pose as firefighters as a calendar. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, the elder was like, yeah, I'll put it on my walker and everything. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah. That's the best thing. So maybe we'll have a calendar. Who knows? Yeah. But oh, that would be great. Yeah. 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 <laughs> the most ridiculous calendar the you've ever seen. <laughs> yeah. 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 Just yeah. just burying a buffalo robe. That's it. Oh, yeah. Narcan. Maybe a bandolier. <laughs> <laughs> These aren't spiritual visions. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I'm marrying it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Ooh, okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. Song yeah. you no. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Mm. When you record that part. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But, well, I just want to thank everyone for uh, coming through. You know, Shane. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. thank always you a pleasure, you brother. Coming. Always Appreciate a you, pleasure. Uh, yeah, I love you guys, man. This is awesome. When, when I thought it, when I seen that we had this opportunity, I thought, you know, for sure, the first person I would like to share their experience, strength, and hope. You know, you were the first person that came to mind. Thank you, Barry. You know, so... Uh, you know, big shout out, 506, to Cindy. We love you, Cindy. And, um, you know, I guess it's time to wrap it up. Speaking of wrapping it up, snag boxes. Yeah, snag bags. Oh, snag bags, what are we doing? What are we saying? Not Podcast. Not snag bags. Bags. <laughs> <laughs> Go snag bags. Bags. <laughs> But I'm married. Well, we're married. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> on awesome. our page, if you are looking for a snag bag, uh, you can go to our page, fill out the job form, or if, uh, the college safe boxes, or if you just want supplies, harm mm -hmm. reduction supplies. Uh, we've been, we've mailed over 200 packages, mm -hmm. and uh, we've we've reached. We we sent one to Canada. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, we've hit you know 10, 15 states. Yeah, and so we're trying to, you know. I'm pretty sure color them all everybody in. in Michigan has something. For <laughs> yeah, yeah. The University <laughs> yeah. of Michigan is just crushing it right now. <laughs> like, yeah. They're getting a lot. We're reaching into uh, Haskell. We're trying to get. We had the dean of a college dean, actually yeah, order a dean. box just for yeah. his kids. We got um, Montana. Yeah, Montana this morning. Wow. So yeah, lots of different tribes, lots of different areas, and so. You know, we'll see where we can go next. Great resource. Mm -hmm. Great mm -hmm. resource. Yeah. That's that's amazing. Yeah. Mingo says, "Don't let, uh, don't ruin anybody's summer." Yeah, yeah, yeah that's don't ruin anybody's <laughs> summer. <laughs> 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 well, uh, I guess that's it. You yeah. know, um, sweet. Yeah. Thank yeah. you for tuning in. We want to thank all of our listeners. Yeah. Uh, it, it it it's always a pleasure to be able to come out and uh, serve our community. So uh, I just want to say thank you to everybody who who tunes in. You know, uh, if you could, you know, like, share, and comment, comment, comment. send questions. Yep. Yeah, like you have we would love you want to, us to hear. Talk about yes, yeah, we would love topics. to hear from y'all. You know, and uh, it's always a pleasure. So uh, thank you. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh.